what I'm talking about when I'm talking about coaching. Um, it's broadly in line with this quote from Sir John Whitmore, the, the late uh, coaching guru in the UK. Mm -hmm. Coaching is unlocking a person's potential to maximize their own performance. It's helping them to learn rather than teaching them. So we could draw a, uh, a spectrum between directive coaching, um, which is this is like sort of old fashioned sports coaching uh, where they're telling you how to grip the club or the racket uh, and they're telling you to speed up here, slow down there, uh, take a deep breath here and so on, where the coach has to be a total expert in the skill that they're coaching you on. And their role really is to instruct you. And the coach's role is to really follow those instructions. So it's kind of like teaching or training. So that's one end of the spectrum. Uh, the other end of the spectrum, and this is where I'm focusing, is non-directive coaching. So the assumption here is that the client already knows what to do, but they maybe haven't accessed the information they need or the skills they need to be able to make the right decisions at this point. So the coach is a facilitator rather than an instructor. And the coach does not have to be an expert in the field that they're uh, coaching you to improve your performance on. So um, I have coached, for example, chief executives of local authorities, and I have absolutely no idea really what they're doing in their job but it doesn't matter because they know what they're doing they are the experts in the, in their mm -hmm. job my role as a coach would be to ask them questions which um, help them to get to the information they need to improve their own performance so we're very much looking at the non-directive end of things and uh, you know both forms of coaching work mm -hmm. Both forms of coaching are appropriate in particular circumstances. Um, I like the non-directive form because uh, mm -hmm. it's less work for me. I don't have to be an expert in everything. And it means I can coach anyone who is willing to be coached. Yeah. And um, this is, if I may interject here for a moment, mm -hmm. I think this is the very first time I've actually seen a very clear explanation and distinction between the different types of coaches, right? Because like like you said yourself, you know, like with the direct coach, that basically is a coach who is an expert in the field of X, Y, Z. So if I'm a football coach, then I'm an expert in football. And that's it. That's where I stop. Whereas yeah. with a non-directive, it doesn't matter what the client does. I will still be able to help them uh, because of the principles I follow rather than because of my in in. Um, specialized knowledge of the client's uh, field of expertise or action. Yeah. And I am not knocking directive coaches at all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. We, we need them, you know, sales coaches, for example, um, they can share with you all kinds of knowledge and uh, tools and tricks about, uh, about sales, business coaches, similarly. Um, what we're doing with non-directive coaching, though, is a slightly different thing. And in fact, you can switch between the two. Uh, you can switch in and out of directive coaching um, as long as you realize when you're doing directive coaching and when you're mm -hmm. doing non-directive coaching. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to get that distinction. Awesome. Clear. Great. Uh, okay. So specifically, 